Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Now we will look to that nature of the surface force. For that, let us consider a small fluid ele element, small fluid element in the shape of a tetrahedron. In the shape of a tetrahedron, such that three of its faces lies on the three coordinates plane. Okay? A tetrahedron that is a figure with four faces, but this tetrahedron is such that it has three faces lying on the three coordinate planes, and the fourth face is an inclined face. Let us take it this way. and these three mutual orthogonal direction let us take them to be A, B, C. That is the unit vector along this direction is A, unit vector along this direction is B and the unit vector along this direction is C. And the tetrahedron. So, this makes one face lying on this coordinate plane A C coordinate plane this face lies on coordinate plane B C. and this third face lies on the coordinate plane A B this face and the inclined face now this becomes <coughs> now let us say what is the force acting on this element the surface forces that are acting on this element. We did not or rather for sake of simplicity we will not write that x and t thus because you are thinking of a small element and in our discussion that the position is remaining unchanged and the time is also not changing. So, that position vector and time in that expression we will not write we will simply write t as function of n. Yes. Let us say these elements are area are delta a 1 is the area to which a is normal that is the face that is lying in the B c plane has area delta a 1. Similarly, the face which is lying on a c has area delta a 2 and this third face which is lying on this plane A B has area delta A 3 and the area of the inclined faces face inclined face is let us say delta A area of the faces are like this. inclined face 
with normal n. This normal we are denoting let us say n. delta a 1 sorry face with normal actually it is minus a we are taking only the normal which is pointing out of the volume so, the normal is actually minus a. Similarly, delta a 2 and delta a 3, delta a 2 corresponds to minus b and delta a 3 <coughs> So, what is the total surface force acting on this element? total surface force acting on this element Okay, then Yes. Now, can we express this delta A one, delta A two, delta A three in terms of delta A? You see this delta A 1, delta A 2, delta A 3 are the projection of the area delta A in three different in three coordinate planes. So, what is the relationship? How can you write delta A 1? What is delta A 1? Say as an example. Hmm? what is the projection of n along a you know the unit vector say say what, what it is so what it is what is delta a 1 then total n dot a into delta a And in our notation, we can write this as n j a j delta a and others also. Similarly, delta a 2, delta a 3. <coughs> then, if we write it in the earlier equation using the vector notation. this t which is force per unit area is a vector. So, the t will denote as by t i. Okay. So, using the subscript notation that vector t will be written as t i.
oh, sorry the first term there is delta a <coughs> or we can take only one Now, let us consider the equilibrium of this fluid element. Consider the equilibrium of this fluid element. This is the surface force acting on this element. In addition, the volume force is also acting on this element. Okay if we consider again that the volume force acting on that element is again that rho f delta v. So, volume total volume force and this is the force that is being applied on that triangular element. So, if there is any change in acceleration or if there is an acceleration then that acceleration will also depend on delta v. This is equal to the rate of change of momentum is not it mass into acceleration this plus this is mass into acceleration. And <coughs> mass into acceleration equal to total body force plus total surface force. this left hand side is proportional to delta v, the first term on the right hand side is proportional to delta v, the second term on the right hand side is proportional to delta a. Okay. Now, think of that this element is being made smaller and smaller in such a way that its shape and orientation is remain same. Okay. In such a situation, you can see that the left hand side term and the first term on the right hand side will approach to 0 at a much faster rate than the second term, agreed? Because the first term that is left hand side term and the body force term and this acceleration term or the inertia force term is proportional to delta v, which is cube of the characteristic size, while this total surface force is proportional to square of the characteristic size. Now, if you are making the element smaller and smaller is what? That is the characteristic size is becoming smaller. So, obviously, this will decrease at third sorry at cubic cubic order, while this will decrease at second order. So, this decrease in these two are much faster than the decrease in the second, the last one surface force term. However, this condition 
if this fluid is at rest, if the if it, if it is equilibrium, this condition will vary always. So, even in the sense when this characteristic size or this volume approaches to 0, at that limit also this equation holds or this element is in equilibrium. How is it possible? One, two terms are decreasing in as a delta x cube say or delta l cube, while another is decreasing as delta l square. How can they balance? That is possible if this is entirely 0. This is possible only if this total surface force is entirely 0, otherwise this will not be balanced by these two, because these are much smaller than this, it cannot balance. Only possibility is that this has to be 0, only then it can be balanced. Follow this argument. <coughs> so, this <coughs> gives us that. Now, see this vector n and vector t that is the surface force power unit area and the normal to the surface is independent of your choice of axis system. Whatever axis you choose the normal will remain normal and the surface force will remain the surface force. It is irrespective of or independent of axis system. So, the left hand side is independent of axis system. Consequently, the right hand side also has to be then axis independent or you see this the left hand side is a vector, the left hand side is a vector and on the right hand side n j itself is a vector. So, this is something product of a product of some quantity into a vector with a vector and the result is still a vector. Look to the right hand side, this is product of two quantity, one is this bracketed term, entire bracketed term and this n j. n j is a vector, this we are not sure what it is hmm. at this stage. It is because it gives a j t i these are uh, some sort of product of two vector, a j is a, a is a vector, t is also a vector. So, a j t i is a product of two vector, but it does does not look like your scalar product, does not look like your vector product that is dot product and cross product. The notation is entirely different, the dot product is a j t j, but it is not a j t j. So, it is not dot product. So, this is not scalar this is neither a vector, because a cross product of a vector gives a vector, cross product of a vector gives a vector, this is not cross product. It can be a vector, but we have seen that a cross product of a vector will be denoted by that. <coughs> Let us see, how can it be vector say if a j and t i. <coughs> uh, 
looking to a say those standard matrix notation for tensor, the scalar is called a 0th order tensor, it is singly one element, vector is, is basically a first order tensor with having one column. Vectors are usually represented by a column, column matrix. vectors are usually represented by a column matrix. Now, if you look to in that sense a j and t i, can you think of this product? <coughs> now, Anyway, whatever this quantity is, this is what we are get, getting, but this must be independent of the axis system, because the left hand side is independent of the axis system, independent of the choice of axis system. Whatever axis system we choose is independent, independent of that axis system, because the normal remains normal and the surface force remains the surface force, whatever axis we choose. Also, you see that what it gives what it gives this gives the ith component of the force ith component the end result of this right hand side all these products will be finally, the ith component of the force that is what it is equated to left hand side. However, we see that this this product itself depends on the normal to, hmm, but this normal is in this normal is in the direction of this normal again, which is of course, not the direction of this force. This normal a j is in the same direction as this normal n j, both are j, both will have the same value no, whatever j we choose for i equal to 1 see this will be there will be a sum of it, this j is repeated within this. So, for simplicity let us say if you want to write what is T 1 the first component of the force let us write it T 1 and this n all the time we are not writing okay. just to we are uh, <coughs> can you write someone someone can rip Tell me what it is. I you have fixed one. a 1 t 1 a here we are writing because otherwise you might think all of them are t 1 and then let us cancel okay, because they are different b 1 t 1 b c 1 t 1 c into 
n 1 plus a 2 t 1 a plus b 2 t 2 b plus b 3 t 3 c into oh sorry a 2 b 2 c 2 last one is c 2 c 2 t 1 c b 2 t 1 c yes all are t 1 b a 2 t 1 a b 2 t 1 b c 2 t 1 c into n 2 plus the third term a 3 So, that will be the first component of this surface force on this surface. Anyway, this the term in the bracket is called the stress tensor. This is what the stress tensor. And of course, denoted by two subscript and now we will write that simply as notations did I use is the same notation say T sorry oh, oh. T i j sorry T i equal to this we will write as a small t T i j in j. This T i j is called the stress tensor, which is a second order tensor and as you have seen here that irrespective of the choice of the axis system, independent of the choice of axis system. Like the vector, normal vector and force vector, this stress tensor is also independent of choices, choice of axis system and this T i j which you can look to this you can understand what is the meaning of this T i j. T i j is the of course, force per unit area in the direction i on a plane to which j is normal. T i j is force per unit area we are not mentioning that at position x at time t that is always there these are all function of position and time as you have mentioned in the beginning. T i j is force per unit area in the direction i acting on a surface which has a normal which has the normal in j direction. Okay, here the first subscript i refers to the direction of this force and the second subscript j refers to the direction of normal to the plane on which it is acting. <coughs> and again remember that in the right hand side which is now written as product of two quantity one tensor and one vector one second order tensor and one first order tensor it is summed over the index j the index that represents the plane so in general this stress will have nine elements along three direction and in each direction again three component 
because of three reaction of the normal. <coughs> However, we will now see that as such this is not so that all these nine components are not independent and this we can now again see using the rotational equilibrium. Using the translational equilibrium we have found that the surface force is basically of has the stress nature, the nature of the surface force and further if we consider the angular or rotational equilibrium, we can see that all the components are not different. For that, you can consider an element of any shape you can consider an element of any shape and think about a point a fixed point within that volume and then take moment of all the forces that are acting and equated to the angular rotational inertia force moment of inertia into angular acceleration. Now, consider rotational equilibrium again let us start with consider an element we are just fixing up a, a point within the control volume just to say, take a moment about that point. let us say that this is that point fixed point call O and some element uh, like this. Hmm. At any position surface forces are acting given by that T i j n j. So, what is the moment of the sur surface forces? the surface force is 